love their Triton showers. So it may come as surprising that we're asking you to... Get out of the shower! Naturally, being a Triton shower, you won't want to. And so we're gently reminding you to save water by taking the Triton five minute challenge. So, tails of the ready? You'll feel as good when you get out of the shower as you did when you were in it. Triton, for a cleaner conscience. Welcome to Calvin for round three of the Triton Showers National Rally Championship. Before we look forward to today's action, let's take a quick look back at round two, the Circuit of Kerry Rally. After two fantastic opening rounds, Josh Moffat and Callum Devine share a lead in the 2023 Triton Showers National Rally Championship. Moffat was in supreme form on the last round, April's Circuit of Kerry Rally. The reigning champion took a start-to-finish victory in his well-travelled I-20 R5, finishing six and a half seconds ahead of Callum Devine and Nolo Sullivan, who grabbed a power stage bonus point with the fastest time on that final stage. That ensured Moffat and Devine headed to Cavan level on points at the top of the championship. Kevin Gallagher, Mark Alcorn and Daniel Barry battled hard for Kerry's final podium spot. The Darien was flying though and the second fastest time overall on the circuit of Kerry's decider cemented his third place overall finish. In juniors, Jamie O'Rourke and Patrick Brisling clinched an impressive 6.2 second win over round one winners Jack McKenna and Damian Doherty. From the depths of Kerry, the 2023 National Rally Championship moved up the country for its third round, the Cabin Stages Rally. The Rally Mad County had missed its Maytime event since its last appearance in 2019, but the wait was over with an extremely challenging itinerary of three demanding stages tackled three times each. Josh Moffat and Callum Devine are joined first leading into today's action, but who will come out on top of this tricky and challenging Round 3 Cabin Stages Rally? There's plenty of people to battle here today. Yeah, exactly. Look, look, our championship has been a bit of a mixed bag with a poor, poor start in Midlands. Just trying to kind of get bed myself back in and carry, get a bit of confidence back up. Hopefully today, be a bit more kind of competitive. But look, there's like any mistakes or that you're going to be wiping in the field. Pace is going to be high. Like I said, Aaron's there, Tim's there, like even all the lads up the top. Like it's the pace is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, there's probably a lot, a lot more work on these stages today. You know, um, probably down low speed and all. But yeah, we're good on the spurs. Glad to be here. I never go too well here, to be fair, because we're getting so, low, so close to the Grand Prix now and nobody wants to do any damage, but no, it's good to be here. They're high, they're definitely, definitely tricky. Hey, there's a lot of grass in the middle of the road, carry speed, stuff, tactical stuff. Yeah, there's obviously another uh, really, really good, strong lineup of, uh, of modified cars, so three, uh, probably everyone's saying the same, but unbelievably technical and tricky stages, probably not what we're used to in most rounds, um, but I think it'll, you know, it'll probably bring the cream to the top, so we'll uh, get in and do our best and see where we end up at the end of the first one. Yes, definitely. It's great to be back uh, close to home. Uh, Cav has never arrived, it goes too well for me, so we're hoping to change things around this year and try and put on a bit of a push. It's a good uh, good crew out here to try and beat uh, Eves and Alcorn and Moffat, so see how we go. Declan, a brand new Citroen C3 for this event. Tough stages here in Cavan this morning. Yes, look, looking forward to getting this uh, C3. Um, had a run and one before and, and they seemed nice, so I thought I'd give it a go again. Um, tough stages. Uh, I like one and two there to be fair, but stage three is a wee bit tricky, but again we'll, we'll battle on. Callum, you're getting plenty of match practice. You're fresh off a win in Killarney, uh, joint leader of the Triton Showers Championship. It's a big challenge here today. Yeah, big, big, big challenge, Killian. Hey, um, yeah, it's our first time in, in Cavan too, so stage is very tricky here. A lot, lot different than the last previous rounds, a lot of gravel in places, but yeah, so it's going to be a big challenge. Yeah, it certainly is. A lot of tight, twisty roads there, a lot of gravel on them there at the minute. So, yeah, look, it's going to be an interesting day, so hopefully it goes well. Cavan's top crew seemed overly eager to blitz Sunday's opening 10.4 kilometre seat and test with Josh Moffat and Callum Devine both overshooting the stage's very first square left junction. Desi Henry almost made the same mistake on his way to stage one second fastest time, five and a half seconds behind an ominously fast Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty, who took the lead despite their early slip up. Henry felt his Citroen was a bit nervous over Stephen's bumps and was hoping to tweak its setup on the road section to Cavan's second stage. Opening the road, Callum Devine finished stage one well back, 16.6 seconds behind Moffat's benchmark. 
although it was a questionable time that would flip the rally on its head later in the day. Cahan McCourt and Gary Jennings were the only others to complete stage one before it was interrupted when Daniel Barry slid his Skoda Fabia off the road. The nine crews that stopped at Barry's accident were given Jennings competitive nominal time, with the Fermanagh driver increasing the list of drivers keen to change his car's setup. Josh Moffat doubled his lead on stage two, going faster than Divine by five seconds on the 10.9 kilometre test. The mighty duo of Moffat and Moriarty had now built a strong 13 second advantage after Cavan's first two stages. Still not 100% happy with their Citroen setup, Desi Henry and Paddy Robinson held second, but were under threat from Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy. <laughs> Gary Kiernan and James Fulton completed the top five with a cracking effort through Corrigari. After losing the first stage due to Daniel Barry's off, the crew couldn't have hoped for much better on Kiernan's maiden timed stage since acquiring the Ford Fiesta R5. Less than five seconds behind, Declan Boyle and Stephen Wright were locked in a duel for sixth. Boyle was another to mention Cavan's demands on his Citroen suspension setup. The only goal driver finished Corrigari with a 1.6 second advantage over Monaghan based Wright. Disappointed by how his seeding had cost him valuable seconds in the ever-competitive modified race during Stage 1's interruption, Richard Moffat channeled his inner emotions into a stunning drive through Cavan's tricky second stage. Cahan McCourt and Gareth McHale completed the top 10, with the latter suffering from a soft brake pedal in his Polo or 5. Corrigari proved to be an eventful stage for the modified runners, chasing Moffat's incredible benchmark. Daniel McKenna came closest but knew there was more time available. Desi Keenan seemed satisfied just to survive the gravelly stage. Keenan lost a few seconds stalling at a hairpin, while Kevin Eves' Toyota Corolla did the same. Eves hemorrhaged even more time though, as his car wouldn't restart while in gear. Chris Armstrong was left wishing it was a stall he was complaining about. Instead, Armstrong had beached his escort mid-stage, ruining hopes of success on his home rally. A punishing run through Bono allowed Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty to complete a hat-trick of stage wins before Sunday morning's service halt. The Hyundai crew were six and a half seconds faster than anyone on stage three to extend their lead to a sizable 23.6 seconds over Desi Henry. Henry had his eyes on Callum Devine and Gary Jennings, who were four and a half and 5.8 seconds behind, respectively. Devine had no issues to report, and the National Rally Championship's opening round winner was bound to be wondering where Moffat was finding such spellbinding speed. Gary Kiernan was still shining in fifth overall, keeping Rally 2 regular Cahan McCourt at bay. McCourt's setup struggles disrupted his morning's rhythm, but still managed to jump on three places on stage three, 4.6 seconds ahead of David Kelly, who was out in his Citroen C3. Declan Boyle and Stephen Wright were the two losers of McCourt and Kelly's climb up the leaderboard. They were still gripped in their own battle, with three seconds between them. Gareth McHale had hoped to join Boyle and Wright's duel, but his brake issues had got even worse in the late spring sunshine. McHale spun his Polo R5 as his brake pedal went straight to the floor through the 14km test. Daniel McKenna slipped ahead of McHale and into the top 10 on stage 3. McKenna's eyes were on a high oil temperature reading. McKenna inherited the lead from Richard Moffat, whose brave start to the rally came to an end when his started clipped a bank on the inside of a left-hander and rolled out of stage 3. We take a quick commercial break now, as without our advertisers, this show wouldn't be possible. Stages down here, and Josh Moffat is holding a commanding lead. Let's go talk to some of the leading crews. 
These tight, twisty stages are really suiting you. Yeah, it seems to be anyway. I suppose we weren't too sure what to expect, but yeah, I think the the gravel, we probably feel a wee bit more uh, comfortable in, on it than maybe others there. But yeah, it's going good so far, but still a long way to go yet. So who knows what could happen. It's, it's very dusty and gravelly, you know, so maybe I'm just putting a wee bit too much caution to it. Obviously being first on the road here, so yeah, look how the guys are driving hard. So yeah, look, we've made a lot of changes there now and uh, maybe try and see if we can and roads on it, you know, again. Josh Moffat approached Cavan's second leap of stages with a lead that looked difficult to overturn. But as we've seen so often in Irish rallying over the years, anything can happen and it usually does when you're least expecting it. A change of setup on tyre choice gave Callum Devine the boost he needed on stage four. His polo was on song, setting the fastest time by 2.3 seconds ahead of Desi Henry. But what about rally leader Josh Moffat? The drama was unfolding and the bad luck had struck. Their Hyundai suffered an electrical glitch during the 10 kilometer test, coming to a complete stop before Moffat somehow got it going again. Going into stage five, Callum Devine sensed an opportunity and blitzed the 10.9K Corrigari stage once again, going fastest by a mighty 6.8 seconds. Josh Moffat was slow to arrive at the stop control. Had his Hyundai's electrical issues hit again? No, but there was a moment, a big moment. The rally leader had caught a bit of gravel on the outside of a corner, spinning the car around and leaving him facing the wrong direction. Again, Moffat was forced to think in his feet and spin his Hyundai around to blast his way back towards the finish line. In total, Moffat lost 11.3 seconds to Devine on stage 5, and his lead had been cut to 8.4 seconds. Callum Devine completed his perfect assault on Calvin's second loop of stages with his third fastest time on the bounce on stage 6. Josh Moffat had gathered himself to avoid a costly slip-up. His advantage was now just 6.7 seconds over Devine, or so he thought. Word came through during Cavan's final service that Divine stage one time had been amended. It was actually 10 seconds quicker than the leaderboard had been showing. The script had been flipped. The Cavan stage's rally was now in the hands of Callum Divine and Noel O'Sullivan, who held a 3.3 second lead over Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty. We were all in for one epic ending over Cavan's final three stages. And the drama wasn't just confined to the top two. Desi Henry was much happier with his Citroen setup through the middle loop of three stages. His grip on Cavan's final podium position looked fairly strong until an overshoot and a niggle with the car cost him over 20 seconds on stage six. Gary Jennings was waiting to capitalise, stealing third spot and a 5.7 second advantage with three tests to go. Gary Kiernan was proving to be a potent threat to the Rally 2 pack, meanwhile in his right-hand drive or 5 Fiesta. Cahan McCourt, David Kelly and Declan Boyle were all battling for the positions behind. The latter lost seventh to David Kelly thanks to a time-sucking overshoot on stage six. Daniel McKenna was doing all he could to keep his grasp on the modified lead with Desi Keenan and Kevin E's ever-present threats behind. McKenna went fastest in two-wheel drive on stage six by 0.2 seconds, increasing his lead over Keenan to 4.3. Kevin Eves made inroads into McKenna's lead on stage four, taking 4.7 out of the Monaghan man, but that effort was spoiled by a half spin on stage six, dropping Eves back behind Keenan 11 seconds off McKenna's benchmark. Keenan and Eves' modified monsters were embroiled in the middle of a rally two shootout for 10th, eight seconds separated five crews who were all in the hunt for a top 10 finish with three stages to go. Mark two trophy leader Mark Alcorn retired on stage five with an ass. Soaking up the afternoon sun, spectators awaited the conclusion of a bruising Cavan Sages rally that had all of a sudden turned into a thriller. The question on everyone's lips, could Josh Moffat flip Callum Devine's momentum and challenge for victory after seeing his 23.6 second lead disappear over the last loop of stages? Callum Devine completed stage 7 with a time near identical to the previous loop. He was pushing hard, but the high temperatures had given the road surfaces a shiny tar-like finish. Josh Moffat completed Stephen with no dramas, and he was faster than Devine. In fact, he was back into the lead, albeit by a slender single second. The race for victory was well and truly on. 
Sticking to Calvin's crazy turn of events, Callum Devine bounced back straight away on stage eight, setting the fastest time to lead Josh Moffat by 0.3 seconds with just a stage to go. Eight stages, four fastest times apiece and less than half a second between them. This was national rallying at its very best. In the battle for third, Desi Henry was a man on the move. After his unfortunate time loss on stage six, Henry had nibbled away at Gary Jennings' grip on third. A third fastest time on Cavan's penultimate stage was enough for Henry to leap into the final podium spot with 1.7 seconds in hand over Jennings. Cahan McCourt was finding his form too, much happier with how his Ford Fiesta Rally 2 was handling the bumps and jumps in Cavan. He overhauled Gary Kiernan on stage 8, moved into 5th with Kiernan fighting to keep his Fiesta on the road. Its tracking was out of line and he could do nothing about McCourt's final loop charge. In the race for two-wheel drive bragging rights, Kevin Eves wasn't giving up on his hopes of victory. A stunning time on stage seven put Eves Corolla ahead of Desi Keenan and took 7.2 seconds out of Daniel McKenna's long-term modified lead. McKenna subdued Eves' efforts though on Cavan's penultimate stage by extending his advantage over the pacey Pedigo pilot to 5.6 seconds with one tricky bono test to go. And before we visit Calvin's epic last stage battles, we take a look at the class results. Car number 99, the Clio of Jack Brennan and John McGrath led class one from start to finish. Jack and John lead class one after round three of the championship. Class two had a battle all day long between the rally four cars. After three stages, Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle had a 4.4 second lead over Keelan Grogan and Eric and Sherlock, with Dylan Eves and Ryan Farrell also in a fiesta a further 4.4 seconds behind. Positions remained the same over the second loop, but on the final loop, McHugh and Boyle made a mistake, which allowed Grogan and Sherlock to take the class win by 0.8 of a second, with Eves and Farrell just a further 2.6 behind. Eves and Farrell also took drive of the day, and Ryan McHugh and Declan Boyle take the championship lead. The Garrity brothers, Rory and Martin in a Citroen DS3, led Class 3 from start to finish. They had 38.2 seconds to spare over the McConnan brothers in the 208, with the Honda Mountain father and son combination of Packy and Colin Duffy a further 6.4 seconds back in third. The McConnans overhauled the Duffys to hold second in class after stage 6, but they had a steering problem on the final loop, which allowed the Duffys to take second in class. Paul Cloak leads Class 3 after round 3 of the championship. Brendan Comiskey and Martin Connolly debuted the new Rally 3 Ford Fiesta and took a start to finish class win over Thomas O'Rourke and Thomas Scallon, holding a 47.6 seconds lead after three stages, with local crew Willie Fannin and Adrian Foley over four minutes further back. O'Rourke and Scallon matched Comiskey and Connolly over the second loop and made further inroads in their leads to finish 26.6 seconds behind and leaders of class four in the championship standings. Kyle McGuire and Connor Foley had the WRC class to themselves and finished 13th overall and the Class 7 Championship lead. Pat Fitzpatrick and James McEnany in their Ford Escort held the Class 9 lead from Connor Lappin and Ryan Graham, also Ford Escort mounted by 17.6 seconds after three stages. Lappin and Graham had an off in the second loop but got rescued and availed of Rally 2 to hold on to third in class with Hutchinson and Fitzpatrick unable to make up the three minute deficit but held on to second in class and leaders of Class 9 in the championship. In Class 10, Car 100 of Cahill Sheridan and Peter Deary held a 1 minute 27 second class lead over local men Eamon Rudden and Brian Rudden in the Chevette after three stages. Sheridan and Deary retired their Nova on the second loop though, leaving the Ruddens to take the class win and the championship lead. A healthy field of 18 started Class 11F. Calvin Crew, Jack Bronton and Damien Sheridan in their Civic held a 19.2 second leader over Sam Johnson and David Gibbons, also Honda mounted after three stages, with Gary Cassidy and Killian McArdle in another Honda just 2.8 seconds behind. Bronton and Sheridan extended their lead over the final loop to take the class win by 45 seconds from Cassidy and McArdle, with Johnson and Gibbons just over a minute back in third and leaders of Class 11F in the championship. After stage one, local crew Ben McIntyre and Andrew Wedlock in their starlet were lying fifth in Class 11R. However, after three stages, they took the class lead from another local crew of Craig Rahal and Connor Smith. 
11.4 seconds back in second with Paul Crosby and Owen Lennon in another starlet, just 3.2 seconds behind in third. Bradlin Smith took just five seconds off McIntyre and Wedlock over the second loop, with Crosby and Lennon falling back. McIntyre and Wedlock closed the door on Rattlin Smith over the third loop to take the class win by 26.7 seconds. Crosby and Lennon ended up retiring, elevating Martin McPhillips and Peter Farrell in their Corolla to third in class just a minute and 30 seconds back. In class 12, Justin Smith and Gregory McQuillan had an event-long battle with fellow escort crew James Cassidy and Donal Lennon. They led by 28.3 seconds after three stages, with Declan Campbell and Kevin Cregan in another escort a minute and 17.8 seconds back in third. The gap remained the same over the second loop, with the Devereaux brothers in another escort moving into third in class. However, Joseph and Alana Smith moved up the class order over the final loop to take third in class just over five minutes back. Ryan McArdle, despite a non-finish with a broken engine, leads the class in the championship. 27 crews took the start in Class 13. Brian Lavelle and Pierce O'Callaghan held a 5.7 second lead over Aaron McIntyre and Paul McPhillips in the starlet, with John Warren and Ruth Ann O'Connor just 1.8 seconds in arrears after Stage 1. Lavelle and O'Callaghan crashed out in Stage 2 though, and Warren and O'Connor moved into the class lead by 18.8 seconds from McIntyre and McPhillips, with Johnny Jordan and Terence Fury holding third in class just 12 seconds back. Raymond Conlon and Gavin Doherty in their Corolla moved into second in class, 41.4 seconds in arrears from Warren and O'Connor, with Jordan and Fury holding third. McIntyre and McPhillips retired on the second loop, though. All action on the last loop, Warren and O'Connor retired. That meant Gareth Irwin and Justin McCauley elevated themselves to a class win, with Tim Flood and Anthony Smith jumping up into second in class, just 4.1 seconds from the class winner, promoting Conlon and Doherty to third in class. That means Warren still holds a four-point championship lead in Class 13. In Class 15, the Dents Away crew of Brian Kowalski and Declan Campbell and Patrick Connolly and John McCarville in another Subaru had the Class 2 themselves. Kowalski and Campbell taking the Class win by over four minutes from Connolly and McCarville and extended their championship lead. In Class 20, Michael Carbon and Dino Sullivan had a three-minute lead over Kieran Rorty and Michael O'Donnell in their EVO 9 after three stages, with Jerry McIntyre and Paul Clark in the EVO 4 less than a minute further back in third. Rorty and O'Sullivan retired on the second loop. Carbon and O'Sullivan took the class win, 20th overall and leaders of the championship, with McIntyre and Clark holding on to second in class. Just two crews started the historic Class 18 with Michael McDade and Declan Casey in their escort taking a start to finish class win from Nigel Cray and Alan Keena also in an escort. And as in previous events, Class 16 was dominated by Jack McKenna and Damian Doherty in the Civic. They held a 31.6 seconds lead over Jordan Jarvis and James McBrarty. McKenna and Doherty extended their lead over the second loop and again over the final loop to take the class win by over a minute from Jarvis and McBrarty. Jack now with a comfortable advantage in his championship campaign. Kevin Eves pulled out all the stops on Cavan's Tough Bono finale to steal the two-wheel drive victory from a faultless Daniel McKenna who controlled Class 14 for most of the day. Eves was 5.7 seconds quicker than McKenna through Cavan's final stage, taking two-wheel drive honours by just 0.1 of a second. An unbelievable finish after one hour of rallying. Michael Boyle was another to finish strong in Cavan. The Gracie's Bar Publican climbed four places on the final stage to finish seventh overall. Boyle's best ever result in the Volkswagen Polo R5. Michael's father Declan finished a minute ahead in sixth. Boyle was locked into a battle with fellow Donegal Gall driver David Kelly for most of the day. He can be satisfied with his preparation ahead of June's Donegal International Rally, despite being pipped to fifth by young contender Kelly. Cahan McCord's perseverance through Sunday morning's car handling issues paid off with a fourth place finish. Final stage punctures for Gary Jennings and Gary Kiernan helped McCord on his way, but the Ford Fiesta Rally 2's pace towards the end of the day will please the Tyrone man. Desi Henry sealed his third third place finish in a row on the Cavan Stages Rally, finishing with a comfortable 23.8 second gap to McCord.
Cobbins' final 14.4 kilometres would decide who took round three honours and who would move into pole position in the 2023 National Rally Championship. Callum Devine or Josh Moffat with 0.3 seconds between them heading into one of the season's most demanding stages. It was anyone's guess. Callum Devine was first to arrive at the stop control. He set a time 4.6 seconds quicker than his previous stage winning benchmark. He gave it his all, leaving nothing in the bank. Surely it was too much for Moffat to overcome. The battle-hardened Hyundai i20 of Josh Moffat and Keith Moriarty bounced its way through Bono at a rate of knots. Moffat was faster than Devine, but he had a deficit of 0.3 seconds to overturn, stopping the clocks at 8 minutes 37.3 seconds. Moffat had taken 2.1 seconds out of Devine's benchmark. Last year's National Rally champions had pulled it out of the bag. An incredible effort that will last long in the memory of those lucky enough to witness it. After round three of the Triton Showers National Rally Championship, Josh Moffat holds a three-point advantage over Callum Devine and McCafferty's Bars man Declan Boyles in third. Kevin Gallagher, a non-starter in Cavan, leads the modified section. with Mark Alcorn, a non-finisher in Cavan, leading the Mark II Trophy. We hope you enjoyed our show. Join us for round four of the Triton Towers National Rally Championship in Waterford, the Ravens Rock Rally in July. Irish people love their Triton Showers, so it may come as surprising that we're asking you to... Get out of the shower! Naturally, being a Triton shower, you won't want to. And so we're gently reminding you to save water by taking the Triton 5-minute challenge. So, tails at the ready? You'll feel as good when you get out of the shower as you did when you were in it. Triton, for a cleaner conscience.